that cats and dogs have a sixth sense that we don't have. What's that? Well, they feel all sorts of things that we humans don't. I better let her in. <coughs> Mom and I will be home before dinner. Please remember to give Chusaka her food. Love, Dad. Oh! How could I have forgotten this? I just can't believe it. You believe in a sixth sense now, don't you? Uh-huh. Only it looks like for Chusaka, it's a sense of hunger. How much food should I give her? Look, it's all written on that chart. For each kilogram of the dog's weight, serve one level scoop at every feeding. Uh-huh. I got it. How many scoops is Chusaka? Oops, I mean, how many kilograms? I don't know. Then what should we do? You don't know? We'll weigh Chusaka, that's what we'll do. With what? With a scale. There's one standing in your dad's office. You're right, let's go. I was wondering, does it bother your mom that only your dad has his own office and not her? Nah, mom says she's got her own office. It's called the kitchen. Hey, look, there's the scale. Did you know that humans have had scales like this for more than 7,000 years? <laughs> if we want to find out how much something weighs, we need to compare it with something that we already know the weight of. Let's say you need to weigh a watermelon. You put it on the scale's pan and it drops down. Now you keep adding weights to the other side until the two sides balance. Well, this one is too heavy, but this one is just right. Since the weight is 10 kilograms, it means that the watermelon weighs 10 kilos. And that's just how simply a scale works. Well, should we start? Chusaka! Right, like she's gonna come running. How are you gonna get her away from that bag? Huh, I know how to get her. Here, hold this little piece of food while I wear. This may be literal, but it's way too heavy. Just hang on. Uh, please, hurry up! Come on! Hurry up! Done. Her weight is two kilograms. Okay, now we can feed Chusaka. Chusaka weighs two kilograms, so two cups will be just right then. Do you think that you can feed your pets any kind of food at all? Oh, no! For them to be healthy, pets just like humans need to have a nutritious diet. Today, there are special pet foods for birds, fish, dogs, cats, and all sorts of other pets. These foods are made with everything your pets need to stay healthy, like meat, fish, fruits, grains, vegetables, and vitamins. These kinds of foods give pets a well-balanced diet, and there's no need to cook them. They're ready to eat. Just pour them in a bowl and your dog will be happy. And so will your cat, and your bird, and your fish, too. Just be careful not to mix them up, because what's good for a fish isn't good for a dog. Each animal needs its own special food. What 
What's wrong? What's wrong? You have to take out a piece. She ate one already. Hmm. All right. So, that sixth sense. You still think it's true, right? What did you bring that for? Oh, Mom is calling. No way. How could she know it would rain? I knew that Chusaka had it. Hello? It was a sixth sense, wasn't it? Modeling clay. All done. Simka, take a look. I've got my own mm, pack mat now look at that, a pack mat made out of modeling clay. But this one's my own, and it looks just like a real one. Okay, you're right, it really does, Nolik. Simka, Nolik, what's up? Hi there, Fire. Wanna play some tag with me? I really wish I could play tag, but unlike you, I've got tons of work. Yeah, like what? Well, a bathroom hook fell down, Tom Thomas broke the lamp on his desk, the aquarium has a tube that's leaking, so go and play. I have to get a pack mat Oh, oh, oh. I wish I could play tag. Hold on. Nolik, you've got a pack mat Uh-huh. Although I gotta say, it looks a little strange. That's because it's... Let's fix everything before Simka with your pack mat and my fixie board. This'll be great. So where is that hook that fell down? All right. Nolik. Get out some sticky stuff. From where? Obviously, from out of your pack-a-mat. Mm, but it isn't real. I made it out of modeling clay today. Out of clay? Well, it totally looks real. Long ago, back in the Stone Age, people learned how to use clay to make their dishes and sculptures. But the modeling clay that we use nowadays was only invented about a hundred years ago. Actually, modeling clay is just plain old clay with some ingredients added so it won't dry out. And dyes are mixed in to make all the different colors. There is just no end to all the fun things you can make out of modeling clay. I got an idea. Go on, turn around. What are you doing? Grabbing glue out of your pack a mat All right, get up here. Will it stick? Yeah, of course it will. Let's go and fix the lamp. We can't fix this without a real pack of mat Yours will work just fine. Tadish! So, what else did Simka have to fix? The aquarium! Hop on. Well, where's that leaky tube? Here, it's leaking at the joint. Yeah, this tube is gonna need a lot of modeling clay. Give me the rest of your pack mat Sure. And here's a souvenir. <sighs> They're all done. What's all done? <laughs> we already fixed everything. And what did you fix it with? Modeling clay. Ha! <laughs> Modeling clay isn't gonna hold anything. Well, I say it will. Wanna bet? All right. <laughs> ah, it's exploding! <laughs> what in the world is happening here? Floating water. You just do as I tell you, without panicking. Did you know it's possible to make modeling clay in your own home? Just write down this recipe. You'll need a cup of flour, a half a cup of salt, and a half a cup of water. Now, mix the salt with the flour and add the water little by little. Mix it together really well. What are you saying? That it looks just like dough? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's just not for eating. It's way too salty. But you certainly can sculpt things out of it. If you want your modeling clay to be colorful, you can add food coloring or watercolors to it. 
That's it. Your modeling clay is ready to be sculpted. When you're finished, don't forget to let your figures dry in the sun. That way they'll get nice and hard and last you a very long time. <sighs> we almost didn't make it. And did you fix the lamp with that modeling clay? Uh-huh. And the hook, too. That was not a good idea. But it was really quick. Hey, that's true. That's why I want to give a medal to you. You're heroes. For real? Of course you are. And here it is, your medal. But it's made out of modeling clay. Your reward fits your heroic deed. The vent. Tom Thomas. Tom Thomas. OK. Simka, Tula, check it out. It's pretty, isn't it? Oh, splendid. It's nothing but a trinket. It's completely useless. Useless? Look how well it matches my hair clip. Useful things are the kinds of things you truly need. For instance, like this rope ladder I've got. It's splendid. And where do you plan on climbing with this thing? Now this mirror here is both useful and pretty. Oh, how splendid. Tula, you say everything is splendid. Well, here's something super splendid that I bet you don't have. Oh, what is it? It's a mechanical super claw. It must be just perfect for scratching your back. <laughs> now look what I have. A photograph of Vector. And he signed it for me, too. Are you sure that's Vector? You've got a photo of the bravest fixie on the face of the entire planet? Yeah, and the most beautiful. Is it him for sure? No way! Let me take a look. Uh-uh. You'll smudge it. You've been fooled. No. Yes. Jealous? You are. Uh, ah! My photo! Oh, no! What was that? Uh, a draft. This is completely your fault. It's not my fault. It's your fault for bragging so much. Please, girls, stop fighting. Let's go find it. To lose a picture signed by the most famous fixie ever. It will be horrible when that picture of a fixie is found by humans. So where could it be? <gasps> I know how we can find it. Exactly. We'll blow a bubble and watch which way it goes as it floats away. We'll follow it and find your picture. Do you know why you can blow bubbles out of soapy water? At the surface of any liquid, there's an invisible film that is very thin but very strong. If you want to see it for yourself, fill up a glass with water all the way to the very top. Now you need to take a coin and carefully drop it into the water sideways. Then drop in another coin, and another, and another. You'll see that the water doesn't pour out but rises up and forms a hump. That's because the water at the top sticks together. Why? Because of a force called surface tension. Thanks to surface tension, water can form drops. It also helps us blow soap bubbles. Because when we add soap into the water, the film gets even stronger. But still not strong enough to stop the bubbles from bursting. <laughs> OK, it's ready. Now we need to blow. <gasps> Do it together. And... <gasps> It's gonna work. Look, it's flying! I did it! The vent! Of course! Why didn't I think of that before? Have you ever seen holes in the bathroom or kitchen that are covered with grids? Well, those are called vents. And behind the vent is a long pipe called an air duct. Unpleasant odors and musty air can be forced into the ducts and sent out of the house. 
And if you want that old, stale air to leave the house even faster, open a window and let in some of the fresh air from outside. Keep the air in your home as fresh as it can be. Hey, take a look! It got stuck over there! Get it before it flies away! How can we grab it? What do you mean? Don't you remember what I've got? Tish! Thank you, Simka. What would we ever have done without your mechanical claw? And your fantastic ladder? Then here you go. A present for you. Oh, thanks. It's just great. And I want to give you this. Oh, gee. It's just splendid. Simka, are you here? Huh. What you got there, Simka? A little mirror. It's pretty, don't you think? Oh, you girls. <laughs> You're all the same. <sighs> Tubes. Today's lesson will be on pipes and tubing. Right here inside of this laboratory, you can see them all over. Look! Over there. And there. Some more over there. And there's another one. So, who can tell me some different uses for tubes? Digit. Uh, They're used in plumbing to carry the water. No, like, in school, we don't give an answer without being called on. Digit. You can. And for carrying waste. I am talking to Digit now. Gas goes through pipes, too. Stop interrupting us. And don't forget about smoke in a smokestack. No, like, that's just rude behavior. Out right now. All right. And a shower hose. That's also a tube, right? I told you to get out. Yikes! And a vacuum cleaner's got one, too. Hmm. And those spy glasses that pirates use when they're sailing. Hey, what do you say we all go and sneak out of here? Great idea. Let him call out to himself. Shh. And a trumpet's a tube that you blow through. Nolik is my younger brother. There's a lot he still doesn't know, but that doesn't stop him from getting involved in things he probably shouldn't. Unfortunately, that can get him into trouble. So, every once in a while, me or my parents have to rescue him. No, I wouldn't call Nolik a pest. He's just a bit curious. That's why he broke the number one fixie rule, hide from humans. Nolik's the one who first became friends with Tom Thomas. Well, I was there too, but Nolik started it. Actually, <laughs> first it was Grandpus. Many years ago, he befriended Professor Eugenius. And after that, the professor let us have our school in his laboratory. So it turns out that Nolik is just like his grandfather. Digit, go on then. Tubes are, uh... Wow! Just look at all the tubes in here. There's rubber ones and glass ones that are curvy. Oh, yeah! Pens! Parts of them are tubes, too. Ugh. Um... <laughs> he stopped talking. He ran out of ideas. <sighs> and those tube slides at the water park. <laughs> <laughs> the barrel of a rifle and the shell of a bullet. Those are tubes. Oh, there's a tube with a serious crack. And it's also dripping and hissing. It's dripping? Where? How can I show you when you kick me out of class? <laughs> What's going on? Take a look. That tube up there is leaking. <gasps> That's acid dripping out. Is that dangerous? It's awful. Any second now, it'll explode. <gasps> Where did Professor Eugenius go? He went to eat his sandwich. So what do we do? It's a disaster. Don't panic. Fire, Verda. Go to that hose and shut off that valve. Simka, go get a pack of map. We'll fix this pipe ourselves. It's very important to be sure that a pipe won't leak. But making pipes that won't leak isn't so easy. 
Pipes can be made by rolling up a sheet of metal and sealing it up. Unfortunately, the seam can break, and that's why people have figured out how to make pipes without seams. They do it by stretching out hot metal on special machines. And PVC pipes are squeezed out of hot plastic like pasta. When the plastic is cooled down, it hardens into a pipe. We fixed it just in time. Know it. Way to go there. Hey, Simka, where is he? Don't know. <laughs> he finally left. Here I am. Nolik, I want to thank you for being alert. And I'd like you to join our class. Tiddies! Only don't forget, in my class, students cannot answer unless they're called on. Now then, pipes and tubing. Digit, please continue. Well? But Nolik said all of them already. <laughs> <laughs> Nolik. Not all. A straw for drinking a shake is a tube, and some noodles are tubes made out of dough. And what's it called? Uh, that thing. A hole in a mountain. Wait a second, I'll get it. A volcano! That's not it. They go this way. I mean the kind that go like that. <laughs> They're tunnels! You got it! Well done there. Yeah. The Eco Tester. Are you ready to see my new invention? I just can't wait to show you what it does. Whoa! What is it? An eco-tester. And what is it for? This device lets you check vegetables or fruit, so you'll know if they're safe to eat. <laughs> to grow apples, tomatoes, or melons faster and bigger, people add chemical fertilizers to the soil. But there's a problem if too much of these chemical fertilizers is used. When there's too much of them, the harmful chemicals get inside the fruits and vegetables, and that makes them very dangerous to eat. An eco-tester is a special device that quickly shows how much of these harmful chemicals have gotten inside of the food. And if the reading is too high, that means you shouldn't eat it. As you can see, the eco-tester shows that this apple is good. Well, let's see. Look. This one is safe, too. Ugh, it's not interesting this way. <laughs> These apples are all safe. Now let me take this delicious apple and, um, make it bad. <laughs> we will inject this apple with a harmful amount of nitrates. How come? What do you mean, how come? So we can see how the eco-tester works. Aha! Uh -huh. So you see, the eco-tester clearly shows this apple is poisonous and can't be eaten. Is it only for apples or for any kind of fruit? Any fruit or vegetable. <gasps> I can get a watermelon to show you. <gasps> Could it really be true that watermelons can have nitrates too? Of course they can have nitrates. Humans often act without any concern for nature. The waste from factories, airplanes, cars and cities causes tremendous damage to nature. Species of plants and animals disappear. Air, water, and soil become polluted. And many other kinds of ecological problems appear. And humans shouldn't think that ecological problems are just nature's problems. Because when humans harm nature, they are also harming themselves. People breathe in the dirty air, drink polluted water, and eat food grown in soil contaminated with chemicals. If humans don't want to drink milk filled with poisons, and they want to eat ecologically clean fruits and veggies, then they must learn to treat nature as their friend. Hey, why don't we ugh, test these apples ourselves? Ugh. Nolik, help me out. I don't care. That apple's poisoned with nitrates. Oh, apples. <gasps> mm. Elisa, don't eat that. Uh, oh. Lisa, 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 stop. Uh, please sit down. What? You bit into it? Yes, and what? Uh, oh, no. It's poisoned. What? <laughs> Do you have trouble talking? 
Oh, yeah. You feel faint. Oh, I'm fainting. Oh. Elisa, hang in there. What? There's no poison in that apple she ate. Oh, my assistant. Oh, no. I've poisoned her. Oh, Elisa, please. There was no poison in that apple. Oh, no. He didn't hear us. What should I do? This is I know how to make him hear. Hello? It's an emergency. It's a case of, of poisoning. Not me. I poisoned someone. Yes, with an apple. Fire. I mean, poison. Oh. Professor, this apple has no poison in it. The bad one rolled away onto the floor. Did it really? This is just fantastic news. Can you see me, Elisa? I can't see anything. How's that? I see you. I can see you. I can see again. I have great news. There's no poison at all in this apple. Are you sure? It's perfectly fine. Here, take a look. The eco-tester shows that there are no harmful chemicals inside. It's wonderful news. This is one excellent apple. And nutritious. <gasps> this appliance of yours is simply wonderful. Now she'll say he's a genius. <laughs> Professor, you are a genius. Thank you for saving my life. Oh, it was nothing. Actually, it was Nolik. He saved her life. I did? Dropping the watermelon was your idea, wasn't it? Ah, you're right. I saved her life. <laughs> the laboratory. to get to the school right away. What did he say? That we've got to get to the school. How come? Did you hear why? I didn't. Did you? I wonder if Simka didn't go to school today. Or if Nolik got into some kind of mischief. Oh, I'm worried this is something serious. La, 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 la. And that's five, six, Style. Seven, eight. <gasps> Hi there. Hello, Verda. Oh, where's Grampus? I'm not positive, but go and look in the chemistry area over there. Over in chemistry? Uh, tell us, was Nolik doing anything wrong today? Nolik? He's always fooling around. Right. So we're not here for anything Nolik did. Maybe something awful happened to him. Like what? Well, how about anything? This isn't just a school for fixies. This is a laboratory. The laboratory where Professor Eugenius works is always humming. In the mechanical zone, Professor Eugenius tests all sorts of different devices to see how well they are made. In the chemistry zone, he conducts experiments on the quality and safety of food. In the electrical zone, he repairs electrical devices and checks their safety. Unfortunately, the professor can be absent-minded, and that can cause things in his laboratory to bubble, spark, or even explode. Masya, there's nothing to worry about yet. But how can I not worry? Digit, have you seen Nolik anywhere? Do you know if anything's happened to him? This is a laboratory here. Who knows what could happen to anyone? Like what? What are you saying? Like that. I told you, things happen here. And where? Let's go, uh... quickly! Marcia, no need to panic. Tula, oh. where is so good you're here? We really need your help. What is going on? Oh, oh there! Oh, we! Grampus! What? Where? In the mechanical zone, there! And Simka Nolik? There. Children. Don't lose your head. Oh! Oh! Masya is my wife and the mother of our children, Simka and Nolik. Masya is a real beauty, a kind and gentle soul, and a wonderful homemaker. She is also a very responsible and extremely skilled fixie. She is our family's expert in kitchen appliances and gadgets. Masya works from morning till night, fixing and cleaning anything that is in need of her expert care. Because she just loves when everything is clean and tidy. But most important for Masya are her children. 
She takes loving care of Simka and Nolik and tries to protect them from harm. Masya worries about them so much that sometimes her imagination gets carried away with what might have happened to them. Although our little Nolik can get himself into situations that even Masya could never have dreamed of. So it's Simka we need to save, not you? I don't need saving either. I'm fine. And what are you so worried about? Everyone's alive. Then why did you make us come here? I need you to help with a little accident we had. Nolik, was this your fault? Oh, no, it's not Nolik's fault. Quite the opposite. He was trying to help me fix it. Papus, we need you to help us with one of the pieces that we couldn't get back in place. This one? <gasps> Huh? Uh. Oh, a perfect repair. Huh, that was really the only reason we had to rush here? Why not? There was just no way we could let this wait, so I sent for you. But fire said... Why fire? Why is it always fire? How come you had to scare us so badly? I'm not the one who scared you. You did that all by yourselves. The antenna. Wow, is this cool or what? Ah, hello there, little fixies. Did you come to see what I'm working on? <laughs> Professor Eugenius, tell us what you're planning on doing with this huge thing. Well, I hope to use this fantastic device to make contact with aliens. Since ancient times, people have wondered, is there life on other planets? What might aliens from outer space look like? And what kind of spaceships do they travel in? There are some people who say that they've seen alien spaceships and that they look like flying saucers. There are even some people who say they've actually made contact with aliens. But personally, I'm sure it's just their fantasy. And science hasn't been able to prove any of these stories either. The one story that makes me laugh harder than all of the rest comes from a guy who claims that he saw aliens with his own eyes. Can you believe it? He said that there was a group of tiny aliens that looked like humans with glowing hair. It seems to me that this guy just happened to spot a few fixies who weren't able to hide from him in time. <laughs> Ready. If I could talk and now what? The if the aliens are out there flying by the Earth, they'll see this plate get hungry and come for food? <laughs> aliens don't need a plate like this, silly, when they've got plates that fly, flying saucers. You're both silly. This thing isn't a plate at all. It's an antenna. Antenna? Antennas help people receive radio signals. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, like this, this, or this, to pick up a signal that's very weak. Powerful antennas that are shaped like large dishes work the best of all. When radio waves hit the dish, the waves all bounce off of it and gather together into one point. This makes the signal stronger and clearer. The most powerful dish antennas can even pick up signals from outer space. No, look, stop! You'll burn yourself! Don't treat me like a baby boy, okay? Ah, interesting. I wonder what's inside of there, do you know? Why don't we go and take a look? <laughs> I was only trying to help him out. No need, Nolik. The soldering iron is way too hot, and I'm practically all done here. Ta -ta. Then let's start looking for those aliens in outer space. <laughs> Just one second, Nolik. There. Uh-oh! And now... Here we go. Nolik, 
Let's see if we can pick up signals from outer space. What do you think? Is it night right now, where the aliens live? What if they're sleeping? Quit bothering the professor with your nonsense. Let us out right now. Can't you hear us? Please let us out! I'm afraid there's no way they can hear us from this far away. Uh, I can't hear any signals. It just sounds like static. Be patient, you guys, and keep listening. Digit, we all know how clever you are. Can't you think of a way out of here? I think I got it, Tula. You stay there. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I'll use a special code I know to send a signal that we're in trouble. Mm. Wait a second. Do you hear that? Could it be a signal from the alien? Hooray! This is sensational. <gasps> it means that somewhere in the cosmos are intelligent forms of life. Three dots, three dashes, three dots. Ooh, it's Morse code. It's a signal for help that they're sending. You don't think the aliens are in trouble, do you? Yeah, I think so. And who do you think they learned Morse code from out there? Yeah, that's strange. There are hardly any fixies that know that code. Digit does. Ah, oh. and where is he, you know? And where's Tula? Well, well, I think I know exactly with which aliens we made contact. I think I know it too, Professor. Lower the antenna. Greetings to you, oh extraterrestrial visitors. Hi there. <laughs> it's good to be back. Uh, oh. Uh, what a shame. I was really hoping that we'd find intelligent life forms out there. It's all right. <laughs> At least we found two unintelligent ones. <laughs> <laughs> the nightlight. They're very close. I can feel them. That's all. You've had enough monsters. It's not good to watch these kinds of movies before bed. Mom, Mom, really, I'm not scared. Let me watch the end, would you? I told you, that's all. Well, good night, honey. Close. I feel them. <sighs> Can you believe it? He's sleeping, and he didn't turn the light off. Yeah, and so? And so, if every human went to sleep with a light on, there wouldn't be enough electricity to go around. Hup! Everyone can probably remember walking into an empty room with the lights turned on. Or finding a TV on that nobody's watching. One little light or TV might not seem like much, but just imagine how many people are living on this Earth. Well, if everybody forgot to turn off the lights or TV when they weren't being used, the amount of wasted electricity would equal the amount of energy produced by a hundred power plants. And each of these power plants needs freight cars of coal or rivers of oil to keep running. And all that fuel has to be extracted and burned constantly. Now do you see how expensive burning a light bulb is for the Earth? So don't forget to turn off electrical appliances when you're not using them. It's so easy. Uh, who turned off the light? I feel them. I feel them. I feel them. I... Look! What's up with him? I think he's playing sleep hockey. Looks like his position is left out. Ha ha. Anyway, he should get a penalty for wasting electricity. Uh. <gasps> Monsters! <sighs> hey! What do you think? 
think we are, hockey pucks? Nolik, Simka, forgive me. Who did you think we were? Mm, monsters. Huh. Well, I see how you could mistake Simka for one, but obviously not me. <laughs> Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping with the light on? I was so dumb. I watched this monster movie on TV before bed. Now I'm scared to sleep without the light on. And that dumb old monster flick, why were you watching it? I felt like getting scared. Ah! You're great at getting scared. Keep quiet, or we'll wake up your mom and dad. How am I going to fall asleep now? Here's a good idea. You can use a nightlight. A nightlight is a little light that humans who don't like to sleep in the dark use in their rooms. The nightlight has a dim glow. That's because it works with a special kind of light bulb that uses very little electricity. These kinds of light bulbs are called energy efficient. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> and you can find night lights that use such low energy bulbs that they can work off of a battery. But you know there isn't a night light here. <laughs> How would you get by without us? Tonight, I'm here to help you. I'm gonna be your night light. Look, right there. There's our lampshade. Thanks so much. You really are a friend indeed, Nolik. It was easy. Just go to sleep. Nolik, ugh. do you know any good stories? I know one about a big meat grinder. Nah, no way. You'd better tell me a story about a nice kind fixie. Ah, I know a good one. And here's how it goes. Grandpoos was working inside of a very big clock. Actually, the clock wasn't that big. I'm not sure if it was Grandpa's, but it was a clock, I think. The electric train. Woo -woo, woo -woo. Zoom, zoom. And suddenly, the Earth is attacked by an alien spaceship. Pew, pew, pew. If help arrives here on time, we'll be saved. Move faster, faster. Come on, get off the train. Move it, move it. Tom Thomas, we came here to play. Oh, finally you're here. I need some aliens for this game. What kind of aliens are you talking about? Just plain old aliens. You know the ones. They come destroy the Earth and just about everything. We don't want to destroy anything at all. Why can't we be uh, the train engineers, huh? Train engineers? <laughs> you don't know anything about driving a train. Oh, we know plenty about trains. Humans invented the railroad long ago. But back then, the rails were made out of wood. People didn't start making metal rails until the end of the 18th century. But the first railroad cars had no engines to give them their power. Instead, they used horses to pull them along. Later, horses were replaced by the steam engine. Wood and coal would burn in their furnaces to boil the water in the boilers, making the steam that turned their wheels. And the fixies were there to help those trains go, making sure all of the parts could work together smoothly. But now steam engines have long gone away. The railroad uses electricity now for its power. These electric trains race along the railway at almost the speed of an airplane. So you might know trains, but you'll still be the aliens. This railroad is mine. So you're gonna play the way I want. The train is unloaded and leaving the station. You can play choo-choo by yourself. And I will. Why did you stop? This doesn't help either. It's not going at all. Simka! Nolik! Where are you? Did I hurt your feelings or something? Mom, is Dad gonna be home soon? No, is something the matter? 
We've been attacked by evil aliens. The train has to be fixed right away, or we'll never escape them. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. You want some tea? Ah, I've got to think of something. Simka, Nolik, I know you're in there. Please forgive me if I hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry. There's nobody but you that can save the world from the evil aliens. All right, it talked us back into it. Well, let's go and check the rails. Nolik, follow me. I'm faster. Whoa! Well, so much for being faster. But it looks like I found the break. Tom Thomas, the rails are broken. I know, and so? You know, but that's why your train's not running. Just like a real train, model trains run on electricity. But there aren't any batteries inside the locomotive to pull the other cars. The engine gets its electricity from the rails. Each piece of the rail has a wire in it. If the rails come apart, the electricity can't flow through the track and get to the train. And without electricity, the train's engine just stops going. So reconnect the rails and your train will run again. Uh-huh. Put them together. Ah. Yes. Hooray! The train's running. Way to go. So will you play with me now? And which way are we playing this time? Whatever you want, I'm with you. The train rushes down the track with Nola as its engineer, when suddenly from out of the sky comes an alien spaceship. Greetings to you, O people of planet Earth. I come from far away, from another galaxy. Have you come to destroy everything? No, I've come to fix it all. Oh! 